Thank you very much, Dr. Dan. And uh, like everyone else, I really want to thank you very much for the invitation to join you at your first conference and the la launch of your National Dietetic Association and to congratulate you. Uh, forming a dietetic association is a great way to advance the profession and I think you've, you've heard about that uh, over the last uh, few presentations and so on. So in terms of my background, I, I think you just heard uh, Dr. Dan uh, give it to you, but I want to say that today, um, for this presentation, I'm focused on my role with the International Confederation of Dietetic Associations, not Dietitians of Canada. Um, I'll have a chance to speak to you about that when we consider international networking uh, later in the week because I will bring my experience from Canada forward. So I'm going to uh, focus on the International uh, Confederation and I want to um, uh, first of all welcome, uh, oh, well I've said congratulations and I'd like to bring a warm welcome to you from your international colleagues around the world and we're really looking forward uh, to your participation as we all move forward together. In this presentation, what I'd like to focus on and explain is, first of all, what is the International Confederation of Dietetic Associations? Why does it exist? Why did we decide to create one? What do we do at the International Confederation? And what have we achieved? And you'll learn that our history is short, so it might give you some insights as what can be done by uh, people committed to a, a cause. And I'd like to give you a little bit of information about the, how ICDA works, because it does create opportunities for you to get involved in the network. And I'll speak even more about that uh, when we talk about networking later in the week. So first of all, what is ICDA? It is the International Conf... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm supposed to be moving these. Um, all right. So... So what is the International Confederation of Dietetic Associations? Well, first, it's new, but it's not really so very new. It was officially established by all the formal mechanisms and processes that you use in the year 2000, so just over 10 years ago. However, it followed 50 years of collaboration amongst national dietetic associations in Europe, in America, um, from Asia, etc., as we uh, planned joint conferences, did some studies on the work and education of dietitians around the world at different times. So it's new, but not so new. It's currently today made up of more than 40 national dietetic associations who are the members. And uh, from those associations together, there's over 160,000 dietitians connected through this global network. So why does it exist? As you've heard from the other organizations, they have a mission statement, they have a purpose statement, and, and so on, and so does ICDA. And we came up with ours in the year 2000. And so the mission or purpose of the organization is to support dietetic associations and their members beyond national and regional boundaries by achieving an integrated communication system an enhanced image for the dietetics profession, and increased awareness of the standards of education, training, and practice in dietetics. When we talk about supporting dietetic associations, we think about dietetic associations at several levels, because ICDA is focused at support beyond national and regional boundaries. So as you've heard and as you think about, national dietetic associations exist to serve their members, dietitians in your country. That's the organization that you're forming today or at this time. Regional associations of national dietetic associations um, have formed to serve those national associations through exchange of information and collaboration within a larger area or region of the world and you just heard about the European Federation of Dietetic Associations, or EFAD, so that's a regional association. ICDA's added value is an expanded network to serve national dietetic associations and their members around the world. 
So what do we do? When we speak about an integrated communication system, we're really out to support knowledge transfer from dietitian to dietitian, to support knowledge transfer from association to association, and to support consensus building or reaching agreement on matters that will advance the profession on a global basis, and to expand our influence on a global or international basis. Some of the key activities that we undertake uh, as part of that integrated communication system include the International Congress of Dietetics. We publish a website at uh, internationaldietetics.org. We do publish a newsletter. We publish reports from international surveys that we undertake. We host symposia and workshops to build consensus or agreement amongst associations and we appoint working groups to find our common ground and representatives to network for us. With respect to that communication, networks and networking are a very important part of what we um, support. So for dietitians, there's networking at the International Congress of Dietetics, there's networking at the International Confederation of Dietetic Association Symposia that we offer um, at the International Congress of Dietetics that provides direction on the priorities of the international organization. There are international working groups that dietitians can become a part of, and there are some online forums for dietitians to network one-on-one -on -one for sharing information and discussion. For dietetic associations, we offer workshops and an annual meeting to build consensus, and that's a form of networking. And we uh, receive reports from national dietetic associations and share those out. And we provide reports to national dietetic associations on matters of uh, shared interest. And again, dietetic associations name local experts and representatives who um, can represent uh, ICDA or the um, National Association in ICDA's work. So the International Confederate, uh, Congress of Dietetics, excuse me, is really our flagship event. It's been taking place since the early 1950s, began in the Netherlands with the first international meeting. It has grown and uh, it is a major opportunity to experience uh, learning uh, one dietitian to another, one association to another, and to learn about culture and how we can apply that to the practice of dietetics. So as I said, it was first held in 1952 and it's been held in a different country every four years since that time. Its initial purpose was to study the education and work of dietitians around the world and the most recent, or the 14th International Congress of Dietetics in 2008, had over 4,000 participants from about 60 countries, and we met in Japan. The Congress program at that time had evolved to become more sophisticated, and it support, supported information exchange and networking on all topics of interest to dietitians. And the upcoming Congress is the 15th International Congress of Dietetics. It's in the final weeks of planning. We're all getting ready to go to Sydney, Australia uh, to enjoy the Congress there. And it's uh, operated under the theme LEAP. And that might remind you of a certain animal that's associated with Australia that leaps very far, or a kangaroo. That's um, their symbolic uh, uh, invitation or, or theme, and uh, LEAP stands for Leadership, Evidence, and Advancing Practice, and there are about 1,800 dietitians and participants expected at that particular Congress this coming September. There's a website where you can obtain further information about the program, and you will see that there are lectures, workshops, research papers, symposia, and a great social program uh, ahead of all of us who are going there, and I hope that uh, 
we may see some of you there as well. Our website, I just wanted to introduce you to that very briefly, uh, because our website uh, provides information, uh, so it's part of our information exchange system, and it also supports networking for associations and dietetic, uh, dietitians themselves. So this is the home page, but when you drill down into the website, beyond the news and, and, and the navigation, you'll see that for uh, one example, there's an area called Dietitian Networking, and it's here that we host uh, on the website dietitian forums or discussion groups. There are dietitians involved in general discussion, and there are specialized or moderated discussion areas that dietitians can establish and then serve as the moderator uh, for that particular area. It also includes Dietetics Around the World, which is the online version of our newsletter. And that, of course, is a major vehicle for uh, networking amongst associations because this online newsletter, published twice a year on the website, includes articles provided from national dietetic associations as well as from the ICDA Board of Directors. But its real purpose is to profile the leadership on issues and key developments in dietetics around the world. And so by reading the newsletter a couple of times a year, you can keep in touch with the advances in dietetics in other parts of the world and see how that might be relevant to where you're at and how you can apply the thinking and the learning that's, that's gone on to your own situation. The second part of our mission is the enhanced image of the profession. And we do create the profile of the global profession on the internet. Um, we'll look at that in a moment, but uh, we also uh, study and report on the work and education of dietitians around the world every four years. There is growing recognition, and we advocate for this from international health organizations through our representation and participation. And uh, consensus, we demonstrate the ability to uh, arrive at consensus or agreement on definitions and standards, the matters that we can agree upon and to which we can aspire. So the international profile on our website is a, um, a page on the website for each national dietetic association that is a member of ICDA, where you can describe your profession across a number of uh, fixed subjects uh, on a form, a web form. And so when the association was formed, the purpose of your association, the number and type of members that you have, the education of dietitians in your country, the work of dietitians in your country the credentials you've achieved, the status given to those credentials, and contact information. And so by every association that's a member of ICDA publishing this information, we have a great snapshot of dietetics around the world. And that's something that uh, we provide. I have mentioned that we produce reports, including the every four year uh, study on the education of dietitians and their work, and you'll find those publications on our website as well, so um, help yourself to those and, and become familiar with what's going on in the rest of the world. And we also work on uh, agreements, uh, common definitions and standards, and uh, you've heard this referred to uh, a few moments ago by uh, Anne Deloy, um, where we have international agreement or consensus on what is a dietitian. And a dietitian is a person with a qualification in nutrition and dietetics, recognized by national authorities. The dietitian applies the science of nutrition to the feeding and education of individuals or groups in health and disease. And that's something that we were able to agree upon after lots of discussion in 2004. And the third area of our mission statement is awareness of professional standards. 
And so, as I mentioned, we really only began this work in the last 10 years, and where we've come to, in terms of the results, is not only an agreement on the definition of a dietitian, but we agreed upon the minimum standard for education of dietitian at the international level. We've agreed upon ethical standards and code of good practice. We've agreed upon evidence-based dietetic practice as a standard of good practice. And we are now working toward an international model of dietetic practice. So that works in progress with participants from around the world. Our in international standard of education is for some still aspirational and uh, not all have yet achieved it, but it, uh, we do use it to assess membership in the International um, Confederation of Dietetic Associations. So the minimum level of education of a dietitian is a bachelor degree and a period of supervised pro professional practice of at least 500 hours. And that was approved in 2004. And you'll probably recall that EFAD requires somewhat higher number of hours of professional practice. But on a global basis, this is where we're at as a, a standard that we can recognize and that some are still working towards. Between 2004 and 2008, we undertook a large study to gather from all of our members information that they had developed that described ethical practice of dietetics in their country and what work they had done on uh, codes of practice, best practice, um, professional standards, etc. We pulled that information together in a background discussion and we sent it out for organizations to talk about and to think about and to respond to. And then we held, um, over that period, uh, a meeting, a large meeting of official representatives from each of the participating associations to discuss those ideas and find those elements that we could all agree to as being important around the world for the, uh, as the underpinning um, of ethics and a standard of good practice for the profession of dietetics. And this is what we came up with. First, we'll say that an international standard is not meant to replace any national standards that exist, but they are meant to put on paper those important matters to which we can all agree. They represent the common ground of dietetics around the world. They contribute, therefore, to our image. They allow us to communicate who we are and what we believe in globally. So I did want to go over those. I have a few minutes left, and I'd like to talk about those global standards or just review them with you. Dietitians practice in a just and equitable manner to improve the nutrition of the world by being competent, objective, and honest in our actions, respecting all people and their needs, collaborating with others, striving for positive nutrition outcomes for people, doing no harm, and adhering to the standards of good practice in nutrition and dietetics. So that is our international code of ethics. With respect to what we mean by the code of good practice, there are several key components. And the first is service and application of knowledge. So a dietitian provides high quality, cost efficient services in nutrition and dietetics. We provide services based on the expectation and needs of the community or client, not ourselves. We competently apply the knowledge of nutrition and dietetics and integrate this knowledge with other disciplines in health and social sciences. So we recognize nutrition doesn't uh, act or our services don't achieve the ultimate result without considering um, the skills and knowledge in uh, other disciplines. We work co cooperatively with others to integrate nutrition and dietetics into overall care and service services, regardless of our situation and setting. And we work in partnership with the clients and the users of our services. The next uh, um, standard is developing practice and the application of research. 
so we interpret, apply, participate in, or generate research to enhance practice. And I think Anne wanted to hear that, that there's international agreement, and she actually already knows that, that this standard exists. But uh, it seems that there's, there's not full buy-in yet, um, perhaps across Europe, in some of the, the need for the, the base practice on, on research, as we heard a few minutes ago. But that's what we aspire to. And to, we have a unique body of knowledge, and it's our responsibility to develop that body of knowledge. So again, that requires research. Uh, a standard is to have an in-depth scientific knowledge of food and hum human nutrition across the discipline and to develop practice that's based on evidence. Communication standard is to communicate effectively through nutrition education, education and training, and development of policy and programs. To advocate for nutrition and dietetics and the alleviation of hunger and the value of our services. And to advance and promote the dietetics profession. And another standard is quality in practice. To systematically evaluate the quality of practice and revise practice on the basis of feedback. To strive to improve services and practices at all times. To maintain continued competence to practice. And under, and finally, continued competence and professional accountability is to ensure that accountability to the public to ex accept responsibility to ensure our practice meets all legislative requirements and to maintain continued competence by being responsible for lifelong lear learning and engaging in self-development. And those were accepted by all of the many countries representatives that make up ICDA in the year 2008 or at the last International Congress of Dietetics. And since that time, we've addressed a standard related to evidence-based dietetics practice, and we have arrived at agreement in this area as well. An evidence-based dietetics practice is used to make decisions in all areas of dietetic practice to improve health outcomes. Clearly states the source of evidence and inter underpinning practice recommendations. <clears throat> And it is informed by ethical principles of dietetic practice and the code of good practice, as I just reviewed. So our definition, or our internationally accepted definition, of evidence-based dietetics practice is about asking questions, systematically finding research evidence, and addressing the validity, applicability, and importance of that evidence. This evidence-based information is combined with the dietitian's expertise and judgment and the clients or community's unique values and circumstances to guide decision-making in dietetics. There's a lot in that statement. You'll have to read it more than once to fully absorb what that is um, and what that means and think about how you would apply that to your practice to be evidence-based. And that was approved as recently as 2010. So in a nutshell, how does ICDA work? It's made up of professional associations or societies whose members have the educational qualifications in food, nutrition, and dietetics recognized by a national authority, and you'll recognize that in our definition of a dietitian. The majority of members have completed the education quali qualifications that are recognized by that national authority. So it recognizes some may have got their education in another manner, from another country perhaps. The national education standard meets or exceeds the international education standard that I spoke about a few minutes ago, a baccalaureate degree and 500 hours of practice, practice uh, supervised practicum. Or um, the members have their education from another country that does meet that standard. And the majority of members of the National Association must meet the international definition for dietitians. So that's who we are. There is some support and assistance, I'm very glad to say, pleased to say, that's been provided relatively recently through um, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetic Foundation. They have a special fund, the Wimpheimer Guggenheim Fund. 
no, Guggenheim Fund, excuse me, established in 2010 as an ICDA welcome fund. And so new members, once accepted for membership in ICDA, can apply and receive up to $500 uh, US dollars to support your early engagement and participation in ICDA and the international community. So that's nice to know that's, that's there when you're ready to consider taking this step. When you're a member of ICDA, you would appoint from your association official representatives, and they carry a very specific role to represent your organization two ways, information from ICDA, information to ICDA, so it's an exchange, and they also vote on matters that come up for uh, a decision of the large body. The official representatives are the one who elects the board of directors, and uh, vote on other matters um, at the annual meetings that we, we hold. Our organization is incorporated, has a legal status in Canada, and we are required to hold an annual meeting, which we do by teleconference at interesting hours of the day and night around the world, as you can imagine. But at any rate, official representatives are the voting members and participants. We hold workshops during the International Congress of Dietetics to build consensus on our priorities and adoption of standards, as I spoke about, and your official representatives would be part of making those decisions. And within your own country, you would look about and assist us um, with your network to identify country experts, experts who can participate in special projects that are uh, put on by the international community. There's a small board of directors that's selected each year, um, sorry, for two-year terms. And the current representatives are from Australia, Canada, India, Spain, USA, and United Kingdom. We manage the, board, we manage the organization. So ICDA does not have its own staff organization. The board of directors manages the organization um, at an operational and strategic level. The uh, Board of Directors appoints the Board of Chair, and it's currently our representative from Australia, Sandra Capra. And the uh, Board of Directors also appoints the Secretariat and the Secretary, and the Secretariat is Dietitians of Canada, and as the official representative, I am therefore the Secretary for the organization. However, leadership in ICDA comes from many. So I just wanted to present very briefly for you how different dietetic associations around the world take that leadership on behalf of the international community. So the representative from India is the editor of Dietetics Around the World. She encourages and coordinates input from all the national dietetic associations to produce our newsletter twice a year. Uh, a, a representative from the United Kingdom is leading the work on development of the international model of dietetic practice in consultation with uh, dietitians appointed by national dietetic associations who are members around the world. The United Kingdom uh, has also taken lead on the study of education and work of dietitians with input from most national dietetic associations around the world. Canada provided the leadership on the definition of evidence-based dietetic practice in consultation with experts from many countries as appointed by the national dietetic associations around the world. The United States has taken lead for several years on developing an international terminology for nutrition and dietetics, working in consultation with experts from many countries. Australia is hosting the 14th International Congress of Dietetics this year, and Spain will be hosting the International Congress of Dietetics four years from now in 2016. So I hope that gives you an idea of how the international organization works, and uh, as you're prepared to, to get involved and think about it, or we talk further about networking, we'll build on some of these ideas throughout the week. So we'll be watching for your star to shine. Thank you.